Hey guys, welcome to Coldplay Creations. In this video, we're going big time. So if you're thinking about getting a giant snake, and certainly there is no snake that we would recommend here at Cold Blood Creations more than the Burmese python. These guys are relatively easy to maintain as long as you follow a few rules, and uh, they come in a wide variety of both color and patterns. Burmese pythons are incredibly docile animals if their needs are met. So we're gonna walk you through this video showing you everything you need to know to safely maintain the Burmese python. So when it comes to physical characteristics of the Burmese pythons, one of the things that you're gonna notice right off the bat is that this is a large python. Female Burmese pythons can potentially get up to nearly 20 feet in length and weigh over 100 pounds. Male Burmese pythons are a little bit smaller than that and they don't quite get as girthy or as heavy as the females, but still male pythons are very large animals. In fact, it is that large size that makes Burmese pythons so appealing to so many keepers. But one thing that can make these large snakes rather intimidating is their large size. We actually have a rule here at Cobalt Creation, especially for me and my sister. If anything is over six foot, we are not allowed to handle it on our own. We have to have someone in here with us. So if you're considering buying something like a retic or a Burmese python, it's going to be safer if you find someone, maybe a friend or a family member, who will help you out with this snake when they get to that large size. So one of the first things you need to consider, even before you bring your baby Burmese python home, is how are you going to house it? Now, a lot of people will go out, buy a Burmese python, come home with it, and figure, well, we'll just throw it in an aquarium like this. In fact, it's almost shameful, but there are many pet stores that actually push this type of caging for Burmese pythons. One of the things that we want to say to you, because this is a common practice among novice reptile keepers, is that they buy an aquarium like this with a screen top like this, they put it on top, they put their Burmese in, and they stack books on the top to hold it down. Burmese pythons are incredibly strong and this will never keep your Burmese python inside. At the very least, if you're going to keep your baby Burmese python in an aquarium type cage, you want to make sure you get one that has a sliding track top. Something that the snake cannot push up on and it actually locks. Now this particular cage here actually has two locks in the back right here. It also has a place in the front where you could put a padlock if you wanted to and the snake can't push this out. This is designed for a snake but because Burmese pythons grow large rather quickly, this 20 gallon size cage would not suit your python for probably more than its first six months. Now I will tell you this, there is a common belief that is absolutely false and that is if you keep your python in a small cage, it won't outgrow the cage. Now, while that rumor started with goldfish many, many years ago, it is certainly not true with snakes. Snakes are gonna grow directly based on the amount of feed they have, and the size of the cage has no bearing whatsoever on the overall adult size of your python. Since Burmese pythons are a tropical animal, they're going to need a way to be kept warm. Now in fact, we don't recommend keeping a Burmese python in a room that is cooler than 75 degrees. But also at 75 degrees, the animal's still going to need a way to thermoregulate. Now one thing that we absolutely hate to see people do, and that's to put a heat lamp on the top of a cage. Uh, a lot of people think that's a proper way to heat a snake. It does pose a fire risk if you have other pets or younger siblings. Having a hot lamp on the top of this and your cat knocks it over into the floor could be a potential uh, fire risk, so it's something you want to think about and be careful about. We prefer to heat our snakes from the bottom of the cage using a heat pad like this. Now, on a small cage like this one here, uh, as the snake's growing, it would be perfectly fine to use a heat pad like this placed on one end of the cage. You don't want to heat the entire enclosure by putting this in the middle, but on one side or the other, placed underneath the bottom of the cage, 
a heat mat will allow the snake to have a thermal gradient where they could move to this end of the cage to warm their body up and move to this end of the cage to cool themselves off. Also, you want to keep in mind humidity. Now, that is one of the reasons we don't really like the screen top cages, even though they are popular in the pet trade right now. It makes it kind of difficult to maintain the humidity level that Burmese pythons need. Uh, we like to keep our berms at about 70% humidity, and uh, it's kind of difficult to do that with a screen top because that humidity is always evaporating out of the cage. So if you choose to use something like this, you may want to put something over the top, a piece of plastic, maybe a piece of wood, to allow some of that humidity not to escape. Also, you want to keep in mind, though, that you do need to have good airflow and circulation so that there's always fresh air inside the enclosure. So as your python grows, once you get past about the six month point, these pythons are going to be a lot bigger than any glass aquarium or any small caging is going to safely house. At that point in time, you're going to have to look at caging that is designed for large snake species, such as these vision cages behind me. Now this series of vision cages are pretty large and this would house an adult male Burmese python. There are some larger versions of this that would be suitable for the females when they're adults. Uh, these have sliding glass fronts. They also have places on the top for a heat lamp that actually sits down. Now this is the only way we would recommend using a heat lamp is when it's put down into the top of the cage. That way it's not as prone to be knocked over and create a fire hazard. Also something you can do that we've done to these vision cages is that we've placed a heating element in the top of the cage and it heats the snake from above instead of using the uh, heating pads underneath. So these guys right here are kind of pricey. They're a little expensive, but uh, they're certainly not going to cost you nearly as much as the damage a large snake can do to your property if it's allowed to escape from its enclosure. Now, one other thing about housing, once your Burmese python reaches this size here, uh, when you talk about housing a snake, one thing we do not recommend, never, ever, under any circumstances, house these animals around young children. Accidents can and have happened. What we recommend and what many state laws require is that if you're going to keep a python this large, you have to keep them in a building that is not directly connected to your home. Uh, certainly you don't want to keep these guys where children can get access to them. Or if an accidental escape happens, you don't want your python to have access to your children. Now, our facility allows us to maintain these large pythons safely because we don't have anyone living in our facility. But if you're going to keep this in your home, you want to make sure at the very least you keep these guys in a separate bedroom that no one sleeps in and you want to make sure to keep those doors locked at all times. So your Burmese python is going to have to be kept warm. Like I said, we try to keep the ambient air temperature above 75 degrees, but even still your animal is going to need a basking spot. Now in our large python cages we use both a light and a radiant heat panel, but both of those are going to have to be controlled by a thermostat. One that we both use and recommend is the Vivarium Electronics VE300. These are incredibly good, well-made thermostats. Um, we do recommend these. In fact, we carry these um, for sale. We'll put a link down in the description if you want to purchase one of these. There's the VE100 and the VE300. If you're only keeping a single animal, the VE100 will be perfectly acceptable. However, if you want to breed your Burmese, uh, then the VE300 gives you the benefit of allowing you to drop the temperature at night, which we do when we're cycling our animals for breeding. But if you look down in the description below, we'll have these available. All you have to do is send a PayPal payment to the uh, PayPal address and we'll get one of these shipped right out to you. And certainly like all living things, your Burmese python is going to require water to drink. Now, we also like to allow our pythons the ability to soak their entire body, which they will do from time to time. Therefore, uh, rather than recommending a small water bowl like this right here, uh, when your python gets a little bigger, we recommend a large tub like these sweater boxes. That gives your python the ability to crawl inside of it and submerge its body in the water. 
Also, as the python grows, the size of your box is going to have to grow to accommodate the larger animal. So we want to talk about feeding. Now, when it comes to feeding Burmese pythons, we actually do not recommend starting them on mice, even when they're babies. Uh, we like to start them on rats because ultimately they're going to need large rats throughout most of their life until they're full grown adults and then they're going to need rabbits. What I'd do if it was me is I'd be looking in the shopper's guide to get me some free kittens to good homes and then you can feed them same and cheap. Fimbo, you can't feed I'm just pythons. trying to save the viewers a little bit of your heart. So when it comes to feeding or offering prey items to your snakes, one of the things you never want to do is to offer a prey item with your bare hands. The practice is absolutely reckless and it's pretty stupid to do. The potential for you having a 15 foot snake chomping into your hand when it misses that prey item is pretty high. So don't think about doing it with your bare hands. If your snake is under about four foot, a pair of hemostats like this right here is perfectly acceptable. You can grab the rat by the tail and you can dangle it on your, on your hemostats. Once the animal gets over four foot, then we recommend the use of a full size set of tongs. This allows you to stay back kind of far and offer the prey item to the snake from a distance. Much more safer than using your bare hands. So as we are talking about safety for these animals, we certainly want to talk about the handling. Now, as my daughter Anna told you earlier, we have a rule here that once an animal gets over six foot long, either myself or my girls are not allowed to handle it unless someone else is present with them. Now, I learned this lesson the hard way many years ago. I was actually breeding Burmese pythons when I was about 19 years old. I was in my home by myself one day I uh, had no one else around. It was during the breeding season. Now, during the breeding seasons, the females are feeding very heavily because we're trying to put a little extra size on those females during that time because of the demand that their body has for the production of eggs. So the females are in feed mode almost constantly. It was during the time that I opened the cage and I was introducing a male into the female's cage. A friend of mine came up to my house, knocked on my door, and yelled and to see if I was home. I invited him in and he come in and as he walked into the room, I was putting a male python in the cage with my female. I looked over for just a brief second to acknowledge my buddy's presence and when I did, this female grabbed me by the arm and before I could realize what was happening, I had this python anchored into my arm with a coil around my shoulders and uh, certainly you do not understand or respect the strength that these animals have until something like that happens to you. Uh, let's just say I was in big trouble really really quick. Fortunately I had seen this happen to another keeper previously and so I knew what to do. We took the animal into a bathroom very quickly, turned the hot water in the shower on, and both me and the animal got into the hot shower until she finally turned me loose and let me go. Now, if in the event that you're unfortunate enough that that ever happens to you, pythons don't like hot water. But something else that'll work that could potentially save your life one day is this simple product right here. Now, we're certainly not doing an advertisement for Listerine, but a small bottle of Listerine in your pocket while you're cleaning a giant snake's cage could potentially save your life one day. These animals absolutely abhor the taste of Listerine. Personally, I kind of abhor the taste of Listerine myself. But just a drop of this in their mouth will usually cause them to open up and let you go. Just a little tip for those of you guys that keep big snakes, this little bottle right here may come in handy for you one day. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching Cold Blood Creations here on YouTube. Once again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you see someone today, go about your day being an encouragement to somebody. The world has enough critics. Thanks for watching. And when you get real big, if you got any annoying little brat kids in your neighborhood, well, <laughs> when I was a kid, I had a Burmese.
python that was 35 foot long and it ate a 200 pound St. Bernard every week. And if you ain't got a pair of them fancy hemo flicking things he was talking about, all you gotta have is a good pair of pliers.